Hey everybody, it's been a while since I've brought a video to you. Um, had some job changes and, uh, you know, with the holidays and things like that, just haven't been able to make a video. But um, I'm back now and uh, going to do some videos on some new purchases, some things I've had for a while. So uh, <clears throat> what you see in front of you is kind of uh, going along with the genre I really love, which are pretty much Old West guns, cowboy guns. Um, I absolutely love firearms from the period, and uh, I've always wanted one of these, and uh, I think probably most of you will know what this is, or a, a reproduction of, of what it is. Um, it's the 1875 Remington um, New Model. Um, I think they call it actually the, uh, the New Army. Um, they had their black powder version, um, which is similar with this, um, this web down here. If you see the black powder version, uh, I think it's the 1858 Remington Army. Um, it has the same kind of web. And uh, they kept with it um, for their cartridge guns, um, 1875. And as I understand it, this was actually uh, kept so that you could holster the firearm um, easier. Uh, whereas the Colts don't have this, when you put it in a holster, it doesn't go in as smoothly, supposedly. But um, either way, I kind of like the look. I've always liked the look of these. Um, differences with the Colt, and let me grab um, the other Cimarron I have. That one right there is a Cimarron Uberti. <clears throat> um, so with the Colt, maybe you can see the difference here. It might help out. You can see a little difference here. Obviously the barrel length is different. This is five and a half inches. Um, the new names for these, for the reproductions, I believe this version is called the Frontier version, uh, five and a half inch barrel. Um, the classic is seven and a half inch barrel uh, that Remington originally came out with. Um, I think the seven and a half inch barrel they now call the Outlaw, um, even though back in 1875, I do not believe they referred to their firearms in terms of Outlaw and New Frontier or frontier. Um, so that's the difference in the in the barrel lengths, but you can see here the grip difference as well on the Colt. The grip comes up right back to the hammer, whereas the Remington kind of elongated a little bit, almost like a Colt Bisley elongated um, down here. And it's it makes the gun very nice um, in the hand. Uh, it's it, it feels like you could just point and shoot. Um, it feels really good. It's kind of a neat looking difference to the Colt. You can see at the top strap here there's a little difference. Um, top strap comes up and kind of arches up and back. Um, you also have difference with the ejectors here. And I'll, uh, I know these are already clear but just for everybody. It's clear. Now the difference here was interesting when I went to shoot it is um, ejecting the spent brass. With the Colt you come from the left side of the barrel underneath. And with the Remington models you, you come over the barrel and slide to eject the spent brass. So it was just a little a little different to get used to coming over the barrel instead of going underneath the barrel with the Colt. Um, I don't know which version I like better. Uh, the look of this is kind of neat. It's, it's definitely different. Um, one of the other differences with the Remington models is um, I think the older models didn't have this this screw for um, for ease. I think there was actually a screw up here but um, on the reproductions the screws right here just like the Colt um, and I kind of like this feature. Slide it straight out, the retaining pin and the cylinder will pop right out. So that's that's one difference with Colt and uh, this is harder to get back in so let me take it off camera. Um, that's one difference with Colt uh, that the Remington had which I, I kind of like that. It's kind of a neat little feature. Um, the case coloring on these reproductions, as you can see, I think I've done a video on the Cimarron reproduction of the uh, 7th Cavalry. The case coloring on this is actually very nice from Cimarron Uberti. Case coloring is, is actually really nice. On the Remington model, it's not as good. There's some nice features, some nice case coloring here. But as you can tell back here, it starts to fade out. Um, same thing with the hammer. Hammer looks nice from the side. Top strap is very nicely done, case colored. This side's actually really nicely done until again you get back here. It starts to fade out. And as you go back on the back strap, you can tell there's almost no case coloring here, and that's not just from wear. Um, I put about 200 rounds through it. This is this is how it came. Um, case coloring is good up here, wears out here, and back down here on the frame, there's basically no case coloring 
Um, probably hard to see, trying to get it in focus. It's almost no case coloring there. So it's kind of a half and half. They also put these, uh, Uberti puts these cat category marks here. Um, and the stampings on this aren't as nice as the, the 7th Cavalry Colt version. Here you can see 1875 Outlaw Model. Um, model is in lowercase, and it's not really in there very good. Um, caliber 45 LC Long Colt. Um, the 1875 is kind of not um, as visible. You can see there. So on the top you have the Cimarron. They always mark, just like uh, Colt and Remington did. They stamp on the barrel uh, Cimarron in old style lettering, which is kind of nice. Um, again, case coloring on the top is good. Hammer on the top, not so good. Hammer on the sides, not too bad. So it's interesting too, the, um, it has the four clicks almost like a Colt, but you can't really hear the third. So it's almost like three clicks instead of the Colt Classic 4. Um, it's very close though. I think it's it's the same. It's just uh, part of the way they make the gun. So that's the 1875 Cimarron Uberti. This is the Frontier model, I think they call it. Five and a half inch barrel. The other thing I like about the Remington models versus the Colts is that taking it apart is extremely easy. Um, on the Colts you have the, top, the back strap here and everything is under pressure. Um, from the the uh, the spring, and with the Remingtons, just like the black powder versions, there's a screw here. You take that out, and you can literally pull and lift out uh, the trigger guard assembly, which opens up all of the internals here. And then you unscrew the grips, take the grips off, and you basically have it taken down. A couple more screws, and all the internal parts come out. Um, the other thing with these. Uh, Cimarron Uberti remakes is their internal parts aren't really machined uh, to be absolutely perfect. I haven't had any issues with the 7th Cavalry uh, Colt down there so far. Um, with this I've already had two um, two uh, what are they called cylinder hands break so I've had to replace those. Um, whenever I got it also the um, the mainspring was extremely tight. When you tried to pull back the hammer I mean it took all my strength to pull the hammer back. And reading online, I heard that the uh, mainsprings on the standard, what, what comes from the factory from Cimarron Uberti, um, are just really taut. So there was a, a company online, and I'll put it in the notes, where you can get a lightened mainspring. Um, you have to be careful doing that, obviously. You can get light primer hits, primer strikes with the hammer if you have too light of a mainspring. But so far, so good. I've not had any problems with um, light light hits, light strikes. So um, the trigger pull I actually worked on a little bit. Um, it was it was pretty tough but now I'll dry fire it once even though I don't like to do that with these but I mean you barely barely touch it and it's gone. Um, I wouldn't mess around with triggers too much obviously. Um, I'd probably go to a gunsmith to get a real trigger job done. You have to be very careful obviously. Um, I don't use this for personal defense or anything. This is just for you know, out planking and things like that. So, but you know, it it works well so far. Um, other than the couple of uh, cylinder hand spring breaks, but those aren't too hard to fix, um, and it's easy to get to with the way this this all comes apart. It's a piece of cake to open up and work on versus uh, a Colt, which is still pretty pretty easy. But um, in terms of the difference, there's quite a difference to me at least in taking it apart and playing around with it, fixing parts. Um, so far, accuracy has been pretty good. Um, not as accurate as the, the Colt 7th Cavalry remake below it, um, but still good in general. So I've also this year I have a land lease, so that's good news because I'm going to put a lot more shooting videos up. It's one thing my channel is lacking. Um, I try to do a review and do maybe a minute, a minute and a half of shooting at a range, but it's very difficult to shoot at a range and, and get any good kind of video. Um, with the land lease now, I can shoot what I want. I can shoot as fast as I want. Um, it should it should be a great thing to uh, to get some more shooting videos out there. Also, um, here's what's going to be upcoming. Um, just some reviews to to watch out for on my channel. Uh, I'm going to do reviews of the Ruger Gunsight Scout Rifle, um, a fantastic rifle. I absolutely love it. Um, I'll do a review on that. The Ruger SP-101, a great little revolver, fantastic in 22. 
Um, a Remington Nylon 66 that was recently picked up, uh, unfired condition, I believe it was made in 73 from the serial numbers and everything I've looked up. Um, absolutely brand new out of the box, can't believe uh, we found that one. Um, also my Colt Frontier Scout Single Action Army uh, 22 long rifle. Um, Colt 1877 Lightning Revolver in 38 long Colt, actually manufactured in 1877, I believe it was uh, mid-November have the letter from Colt for that very interesting very interesting gun um, absolutely love it um, a Sega 12 uh, found a couple of those and picked them up it's kind of an interesting shotgun uh, and the Ruger 2245 uh, with a four inch bull barrel um, saw one of those at a gun show missed the purchase and found it on gun broker um, and picked it up and it's it's absolutely fantastic um, most people that own 2245 Rugers uh, love them, and I've fallen in love with this one. And of course, at the end, uh, shooting vids. So um, it's going to be a, a fun year, and uh, I plan to put on a whole bunch of shooting videos, some fun ones, some interesting ones. Um, fire a bunch of the bunch of the weapons that I have on the channel currently um, that I've been getting a lot of hits to actually go out and shoot. So um, look forward to that, and uh, look forward to your comments. Thanks for subscribing and watching. One thing I forgot to mention uh, that I was planning on mentioning with the 1875 Remington uh, was a couple of years late to the market. Uh, Colt came out with their single action army uh, or their army model in 1873. Um, one of the benefits of the Remington was that it was available in 4440. I believe that was the main caliber it was available in. Um, and as you know, the Winchester 1873 rifle, uh, the 4440 was a popular cartridge for that rifle. So if you're on the frontier, um, it's much better, I, I think, uh, it sounds like a good selling point to be able to carry one type of ammunition for both your handgun and your rifle. Um, that was a major selling point, and I think that's one of the points that Jesse James actually brought up. I believe he had an 1875 Remington and 7.5 inch barrel, um, and one of the features that he liked is that he could carry one type of ammunition for both weapons. So I just wanted to bring that up, um, forgot to mention it in the video, um, and give a little more history on the 1875 Remington model uh, versus the 1873 Colt. Um, so just thought that I would add that. There's plenty of, it, of information available online on the 1875 Remington and the Colt. So um, definitely if you're curious about the 1875 Remington, um, go to Google, uh, find some information. It's definitely a, an interesting, interesting handgun from the time. And uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun to shoot, I have to say. It's very neat to shoot. Thanks for watching.